What? What kind? What kind of channel is this? All right, guys. <laughs> On oh the God. hood of that truck is oh. our new replacement. Hey, don't no, 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 you stay in there. It's gonna be a surprise. This is our new replacement. As you guys know, Matt has left us for Odom Racing. He now works with Odom Racing, and we have a new hire. Uh, the first task was to put some manifolds on uh, an LS, which is, I feel like, a good break-in. And uh, they're, <laughs> they're right there just getting after it, arched back and all. And uh, I know you guys are, are pretty, uh, pretty sad that Matt left, but uh, we're here to tell you that we don't care. Matt was... <laughs> all right, so let's go check out the new hire. I got a dang man fall broke. Oh man, where the heck you come from? <laughs> Florida. <laughs> oh, guys, we, we were able to hire Matt back from Odom Racing. Why did you leave Odom Racing after a short stay there? Well, if you guys seen the YouTube clip. Which, which, which one? Tell him about it. <laughs> Where he's like, hey, I'm a street outlaw! And ain't nobody else a street outlaw! <laughs> Easy, I don't want Ava to attack me. Yeah, she, right, she was coming full steam. <laughs> Ava! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, uh, for the record, Matt never left, he was just been down, he, he has been down in Florida working, so I guess technically he did leave, uh, but he never left the nasty racing conglomeration. I love racing, we all love racing, but, you know, that that is our job, so. Yeah, the Stormwork stuff and is. And he got left behind, everybody else left. Yeah, him. no man left behind, and man, <laughs> man was left behind. Well, no, we came for down in 53 and, days. We came down and checked on him and everything like that. But <laughs> well, we got to work. We got to work. Matt opted to stay and get stuff done, and he stayed and got stuff done. When the work was done, he came back just in time to get ready for PRI. So we're working on Slick Rick, as you guys can see. And now that Matt's back here, we're able to touch the vehicle. We weren't able to yeah. touch it before. So I was actually Matt caution it. tape around it the it's whole like time. If you Matt came back and like he looked at stuff. This wire's been moved. Yeah. So Matt, I guess it's it's up to you giving the rundown of what we're doing to get ready for PRI. Building them. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't heard that in a while. We're building them. Um, yeah, just putting it back together. We we got it running. We we cranked it up. It was running. Everything was good. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that wasn't hooked up because it really wasn't necessary to uh, to start it. So now we're going through and putting it all together and probably going to try to get it to where we can just go straight to the track. But we got our wants and needs. Like. The wishbone needs to be redone, but it doesn't have to be redone to make it to PRI. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all the stuff that has to be done to make it to PRI. And then if we have extra time, we're gonna do that. Cause we don't wanna spend a bunch of time on that and go, oh wow, now it's 2 a.m. and we're supposed to leave in an hour and we're still uh, throwing it together. So I guess ideally the, the vehicle would be done and complete, ready to go to PRI by like Friday. Yeah, Friday, because, you know, we got some cleaning to do on it. We're going to paint it, you know, really go over everything. and All the stuff from DCF comes in on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, so, that get, I mean, putting that, that stuff on, Yeah, you know, it's two hours. When, when we <clears throat> built this car originally, and, you know, all the companies we worked with, you know, we really um, had a lot of coordination with them, and we, everybody, I, th I think a lot of great minds came together, and... Uh, we built something that is easy to work on, it's reliable, and uh, you know, it's not like, oh, well, you gotta take the motor out to get the hot side off or something like that. So, uh, as racers, and we work on it all the time, we know uh, when we build something, we try to build it to where you can maintenance in the field, you can maintenance it back to the shop without having, you don't put something where it's like you can't get to this bolt. You know, you're building the thing, so you can build it however you wanna build it. So, um, as far as putting it back together, I don't think it's gonna take a lot of time. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult with being polished. We really have to take. Gotta care wear of some it. gloves. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really, really gotta um, take your time assembling it, but it won't be too bad. Uh, right now, we we gotta run out and grab some hardware. So I was trying to get the parachute stuff done. Uh, I'm gonna grab some stuff to finish up the strut cup area. Uh, I'm putting the CO2 valves and everything on it in here for the. <coughs> 
uh, air shifter and the air chute. So the CO2 line is going to come out here. Uh, I'm trying to keep everything real nice and compact, not have a whole bunch of lines or anything. Uh, you know, less weight, uh, less failure points. So we're going to have a 3 8 line that comes out here. And it's going to tee off right here. And I have a reducing tee that has uh, 3 8 on one side and 8 inch on the other. So we're going to run 3 8 to our parachute. So it's going to come through here, 3 8 line, tee off to 8 inch. It's going to feed in right here. And this is going to feed the uh, air shifter and then the pneumatic cylinder for the air chute because all that's going to be controlled through the Holly and the ECU Master. So hopefully, John. We're gonna set it up to whenever John goes to the traps, the only thing he has to do is let go of the button, hold on to the wheel. He ain't gonna, you know, pull the chute, he ain't gonna shift it, he ain't gonna do nothing. He's just gotta literally just hold on and the chutes will deploy at the correct time. And uh, that way, cause you gotta think, when you're going really fast, especially if the car's, if something happens on the big end and it wiggles a little bit, by the time you're, you get the car straightened out and everything, you can be way, way, mm -hmm. way past the, um, or the strike. A hung throttle hung throttle all these things so there's gonna be some safety stuff i'm gonna incorporate into it like if the car runs for uh say 4.5 seconds and the rpm still above this then we know the throttle's hung because johnson gonna run it out that far um and we can adjust that you know for like hey we're just trying to go a 450 pass but if it's on a really killer pass it'll be set up to where uh if it knocks the tires off it won't really incorporate that because uh, you don't want to spin and then you might you might go a 50 but if it's on a really killer pass and the wheel speed's above, you know, 200 mile an hour and the throttle's above this and it's still running, it's gonna shut it off. So that way, if there's a thrunk, hung throttle situation, you know, God forbid he hit the wall, get knocked out like I did, you know, puts his foot to the floor and he's just riding, it'll shut itself off. Um, all these things, but he's got a race tech, so hopefully he have to really, really uh, hit the wall hard, so. Yeah, the goal is not to get knocked out. Yeah, 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 <clears throat> not, not to get knocked out, so. Doing this, got the valves there. Uh, we're gonna run the parachute, the 3 8 uh, line to the rear. I like to run for dual shoots. I run 3 8 feed line to the uh, to the rear just because it's a little bit more airflow. You, you can do it with 8th inch, I've seen people do it, but you get a little bit more reservoir in the line, it deploys the shoots a little bit harder. Uh, we got all our stuff from Motion Raceworks. I uh, got our parachute from Motion. No, we got our, oh okay, yeah, we did get the parachute from Motion. We got, got the, shoots. the launcher from uh, Mac custom part number at uh, Quarter Max. Yep, so they're just uh, clippered cylinders. If you guys, you know, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but if you look online, you can find a lot of this stuff is just like pneumatic, dollars here pneumatic cylinder. You go to like McCaster car somewhere, you can find it really cheap. I do like uh, these though for uh, Motion Race Works. Uh, I've had issues before when you cut the parachute cable, uh, you'll have some like rusty. Well, they become rusted. The inner, I guess, wires of the yeah, parachute that's what cable. Yeah, supports. Yep. And the actual tether can get caught on them, mm. and it'll cause like a shoot malfunction. So mm. you really want to not mess around or play any games with the parachute stuff yes. because the last thing you want is a parachute failure yep so and i've had this happen before where it gets hung up in there so what happens is this yeah the sh inside cable gets pulled in there and this hangs up mm. on the parachute so you can either run these or um if you're in a bind and you don't have those and you're going racing you want to get them on there you can take a piece of uh heat shrink and i put heat shrink over there um, that works really well. Just something to where this is not doing. And you also need to cut your parachute cables to where whenever you, the parachute handle is at full travel, this cable is inside this. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to pull to where it's like this yeah. because if this moves, then it can hang up there. You will always want that to go inside this outer sheet. And with this cap on there, if I take it out of here, I'm going to lose it. So I'm just going to leave it in here. But with the cap on there, as you can see, it makes it so just the wire can go through. So yep. it is very important that you you don't mess around with the parachute stuff it's got to be done right because if it becomes a situation where you're relying on that to stop the car you can't afford to have a failure i mean something as small as like one of these can cost you your whole car that's not ideal yeah i was at shady side i went 170 and uh parachute didn't come out and shady side is pretty short track so and, and it's one of those things too if you're if you think your parachute's going to come out and it doesn't you, you guys don't realize how much farther down the track because if you're if you're driving and you're like hey my parachute's not going to come out you're going to get on the brakes harder sooner you're going to be prepared for it but nine times out of ten if the chute doesn't come out you're not prepared for it so you're way down the track and then you never feel it come out and you're like oh mm. i'm screwed so we're going to do that got both parachutes uh we're going to 
running through the uh, rear bulkhead right there for the cables. Need to get some hardware for that. We're gonna run uh, two cables instead of one. I like the two cables personally. Yeah, two cables, one cable, I guess <clears throat> it's the same. Um, I guess it's preference at that point. Yeah. I like having the two, because, and what I do is, uh, they're obviously both hooked up to the parachute handle. I pretty much just keep using the same one and I pull one shoot at a time unless I go to a short track and then I pull both. I'm not sure on this one, we'll probably still just pull one shoot at a time, depending on where we are. Bradenton, Orlando, Galat, one shoot probably does the trick. So I have this shoot on MK Ultra, and it's a little bit lighter than this car, but it, it's got some woe to it. Like you, I, I really doubt, like unless we go to Red Springs or something, we'll be using two anywhere. Um, and then on the other cars that have a trunk, I like it because you can be lazy and you pull one shoot yeah. and you go to like the next round. And you're like, ah, I don't feel like packing it. You just throw it in the trunk and shut the trunk. This one, not so much. So it looks like I'm going to have to be packing my chute all the time. So I think we got a good strategy. Matt's back, so we're going to get some stuff knocked out. And we'll get the time lapse going. We'll be working on it. We're kind of down to like the punch list stuff. So not the exciting fab up turbo kits and making stuff look cool uh this is all like the fit and finish stuff the last 10 percent, the last 15 percent, the last five percent that take a while if they're done correctly it can really elevate the whole build if they're done poorly it doesn't look good so yeah so far i feel pretty good i don't think we're gonna be uh it'll be a rush but it's not gonna be to where it's uh un it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's all been it's, put together, so it should all go back together. Yeah, we got a little bit of fab on some stuff that needs to be added, but it's nothing crazy. The um, the goal is we got our cars and coffee this Sunday, so it'd be nice to have this at the cars and coffee, showing it off, be able to fire it up, drive it around, uh, be able to fire it up and drive it into the PRI show. I think that's going to be a big deal, and yeah. drive it out of the PRI show. It's going to be a big deal, and then we're going to have it on display there. So if you guys are in the area, if you guys are going to PRI, stop by the Race Tech booth and check us out. We got to get this thing stickered up. So we're gonna work, a lot of companies working together. Obviously, we got the Proline motor in here, Hearts Turbo, DCF Polish, Rock Solid Motorsports did the turbo kit, Holly, HR Innovations, M&M Transmissions, Race Tech, ECU Masters. ECU Masters. It's got a lot of really badass parts that requires everyone Brown to work together. Yeah, Brown and Miller we got that stuff as well. So yeah, it's got all the all the goodies. All so. the goodies. So we'll. Uh, I don't know. Welcome back. Well, you get to get back and just right to work. Just like you never left. Just like I never left. y'all getting some work done here in the back of slick rick got the parachute bags on there got the parachutes with the air launchers mounted got our holes drilled for our airlines we got to put some grommets in there and the holes drilled for our parachute cables now matt is going to take off the, the yeah, dick so, yeah so this is um three quarter and we don't have any uh, every other push bar um, that we use. And every other car is set up for. Yeah, it's half inch. So, um, or it might be five eighths, but anyway, it's not going to work for us. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to cut this off and we'll drill a hole in the tube and then we're going to weld this because you didn't just want, you wouldn't want this just hanging in there. So, that'll weld in there and then it'll do like that. And then the push bar. Just, Here's our, our push bar. Yep. So this will just go on here and then you just push the thing down. It'll set like that and then- We'll have um, some wiggle room. Yeah, wiggle room there. We might make that a little bit longer. Um, 
you know, so we may have a little bit of wiggle room because you want a little bit to where, you know, because you get some pretty bad angles sometimes. Yeah, I mean, so, sometimes going up and down hills are the up, transitions. Yep, up and down hills, transitions, uh, pulling in and out of the pits, you know, smart cars, you know, it, it can get kind of crowded in the pits, so you might have to do something to where it's in a bind. But um, doing it this way. Uh, the good thing I also like is that when you make it longer, you push the push bar further down away from all this stuff. Yep. So if you have to go up any weird transitions or angles, it's not going to hit the bar against the parachute mounts. Or yep, hit the bar against the parachute mounts. The only thing you do got to be careful with is the farther you get away from this, the more leverage it has to bend the, this pin. So, because you got to think you, with, with the uh, a spool in the rear and when the tires are hot and when some of the things, it can gain a lot of traction whenever... You know, John might be in there really cutting the wheel trying to get in somewhere and it can put a lot of force on this to where um, it can break it, bend it. Uh, so uh, this is a hardened pin. So this this way, you know, the pin will stay in. I mean, you could take the pin out, but um, the pin will probably stay in or you can run it. You can go up to the bottom like that. So all this stays in the push bar like this. And then when you come up, you just reach under there and slide it up through there and do it that way. So I don't mind having the pin, it's just a little bit of weight. You don't have to worry about losing it, forgetting about it. So it just kind of hangs in there for the ride. Building them. All right, so we got our uh, two pin left in there. Look at that. So we can do it like that, and we can do the thing and go up this way, and you just take that. And... Ooh, I don't know which way do you like better. I mean, that one you don't have to worry about losing ever losing it. it yeah. But this one, like, I tell you what, the Himes they use on this thing, like. When the Heim gets a little wore out and it's nice and tight. Th those are nice ass Heims. Yeah, uh, that's a, I think it's Voss Racing, their carbon fiber push bar. Yeah. They're sick. That's pretty tough to beat right there. Yeah, nice and strong, welded tubes in there. I mean, the, the wall thickness on that's pretty thick. So we don't have to worry about it ever getting wallered out or anything. This is an example of when people are like, man, why is it taking so long? Yeah, no, I mean, it, wait, I had to go through we didn't have the roark step bit we had one but it didn't go large enough so i use this other one and it's we need to buy more roark it's stuff melted like when you see sparks coming off of it it's done roark but, supply you know, code ls nasty yeah roark supply uh you get your porta band blades there john keeps them in business with porta band <laughs> blades i get back first thing porta band and i'm like man this thing is it's, not... a it's a porta sander yeah it's a porta sander <laughs> The, uh, it had the uh, Alabama blade. <laughs> Alright, so we had to, uh, since we're doing two shoots, we had to kind of modify one of them. And then I need some, uh, I need a really long 1032 so I can run both of it through there. Or With I might one just, bolt? I might just, hmm. Do one on one and one on the other? Well, nah, I thought about that, but then the angle, like, it's already. Yeah. Kind of down so. why don't you can you angle the, oh, i guess you can't angle this down anymore no one, one of the disadvantages of using something else that somebody already put in um. so we'll just get a really long 1032 bolt and then we'll run we'll put it through a little spacer thread it through It'd just be a little a little bit of a pain but um that's gonna be the best way to do it so hopefully it'll be one of those things that you install once yeah, no, I don't, you know, I'm not really, if it's, if that's kind of a pain to do, it's not a big deal because you're not taking the parachute cables on and off of it all, all right, the time. give us the grand tour how you're running it. So we got all this stuff back here. Got the parachute bags and all that stuff with all the proper hardware on there, so we'll stick the parachutes in there in a second. Yep. We got our uh, cables, they're going to go down. Think about running them right there. Yeah. I don't know, maybe on the inside a little bit more, try to get them away from, maybe above. 
Oh, yeah, if you put them above, that's going to point them down, too, which would be better. But then, see, the only thing is when that handle swings out, it swings out and up, so it'd be, like, yeah, pointed it's down. Yeah, but it's already at such an angle, it would probably... We can we can try it either way, but if we go up, that'll keep it away from your head as much as possible. Yeah, I, I sit... I don't think my head sticks up that high. No. Well, here, we'll, we'll, we'll try it. Okay. guys i just took you along for packing a parachute uh, whenever i get a new one i completely repack it this is how we pack them when we're at the track one thing that i do make sure i do correctly and this is a tip that some people know some people don't know the last flap should always be going towards where your cable's coming out of so if the cable's coming out this way you don't want the last flap pulling this way because it'll actually try to pull it off of the um, actual cable itself Yep. So you want to put it in this way, that way it's applying pressure that way. It would be up against this little like bulkhead dealio like that or however it would be. So that way if the car's bouncing going down the return road, it's not just going to pop out. You bump in, the parachute doesn't pop out. Yep. And then you make sure that this is cut correctly. When you pull it, the cord goes all the way in there yep. and the parachute will we'll deploy. We'll, we'll cut them and show you guys how to do that because we talked about it. And then also, like right now, you see guys are like jerking on this all the time what happens is when you do this like if i pull this out right now it's trying to wear this out so if you take this and go behind it like this it pull if you did it quick and like if i was trying to pull this out it would pull it in behind here and then the uh whatever you're using for your string will be actually pulling on the back side of this or whatever we'll fray it. yep so um so usually what you'll be doing is you'll have your parachute cable through there. You wrap it around the back side and you pull this. Because what happens is this will get wore out and then mm -hmm. you got to take a frayed one. Yep. yep. It's sewed in. So That's a pain in the ass. Yep. Also, the uh, actual parachute like tether I have on the outside away from where the cord is. I don't want this to get wrapped around the cord or something. So yep. the cords are going to be coming from the inside. The parachutes are going to be packed in a fashion where this is on the outside. Yeah. It, 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 it seems like a lot, but if you just get in the same routine of doing it like this, every time you'll be, it'll be correct. Yeah. So it becomes like second nature. Yeah. So that's kind of, uh, kind of how we do it. So we got one packed. I'll get the other one on there. Make sure I got it bolted on there. Got the little American flag showing. So it's the right side up and uh, it looks pretty, pretty good. What do you think? That's a pretty nice pack for a parachute. I mean, I want to make it look nice going to PRI, you know, I feel like that's, that's pretty symmetrical. Don't you think? Critique it. Give it. Give it your best critique. Just what do you try to, try to make the try to make the shroud show a little bit more? But I mean, I mean, hey, hey, we paid for these. They ain't, ain't free, so I ain't too mad. <laughs> Professional parachute packer. Damn. Matt was smoking twelve packs a day. If you can't tell. All right, guys, we got the parachutes in there mocked up. We got the eye poker nine thousands ready to go. We got everything zip tied up. We got them on the handle. Anything you want to talk about on the handle? Handle's pretty straightforward. Yep, handle straightforward. We got that. Got it routed because you want to make sure it's routed how you want to route it. Not any super sharp bends and uh, get everything zip tied up there because now if you changed where, how you routed it, you could be too short here and then can't make it longer. We're also crisscrossing them back here. If you come back here and look at it from this angle, 
Yeah. It is going to be yeah, crisscrossed because it would just be like a super tight yeah. gnarly angle the, the, it's a lot easier especially if you're trying to pack the parachute yourself and you got to stick the cable in having one that you got to put a gnarly angle on it's just a pain in the ass so having it like this it'll be much yep. more i always do it in the center off. and then that way they just go like that outside crisscross either way the only thing about the crisscross ones is when they come out they can swing pretty hard so uh but i think it'd be all right so we got it marked john's got our handle pulled all the way so we're going to cut this stick it back through and then we're going to cut a quarter inch off of it that way after we put our sleeve on here when the handle is pushed all the way the uh, cable inside the sheath will go inside the sheath that way there's absolutely nothing to hold the parachute from releasing you got that thing yeah, I got it. That's like, that is an extreme amount of protrusion. We don't need all of that. Yeah. You, need, you could possibly get away with like two thirds of that. So I think thread's on? Yep. Interesting. Yeah, I think they do that so it doesn't, you know, come off. Like I, I said, I don't know if that was like a set screw. I, I like. use like the um, thick wall adhesive line heat shrink. You can put that on there. Yeah. And, uh, heat shrink it on there and then it just it's mm -hmm. real tight nice and smooth and everything um like i didn't have i needed to fix it at the track and that's all i had and it's been like that for a long time so it's worked well so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back together and then we're gonna cut some off probably like this much because right now we know when the handle is pulled all the way it's flush this before. will go almost flush so if yep. we cut another quarter inch off of it we're gonna be good and we don't have to worry about this ever being um through mm -hmm. the parachute so you want to go ahead and hold that again Let's do a test pull, make sure it goes. Yeah, you just kind of mock it up. Yeah. Yeah, I will say, you do have to, um, when they go completely in like that, so I know some people will bitch, it's hard to get them out. And pretty much all you have to do is if you bend it in a different way, it leans on either side. So you just have to figure out which way you have to bend it when you push the cable back out. Yep. Yeah. And you can feel it too. Like, also, don't tell your knucklehead buddy to go and cram it out there and pop the cap off. Yep. Yeah. All right, ready? Yep. Oh, yeah. All right, push it back money yep oh, it went right through yeah yep no problem yeah. i never really have a problem with hanging up in there but that is one thing that Chris maybe vet, the vet yeah. does it really bad so like the uh when you do it with the the heat shrink it's one solid thing and mm -hmm. it's like a cone and tapered so you know that's i was wondering why they don't have a little like tapered on the inside i mean there's, there's a lot of pressure on them you gotta think when you when you activate the air launchers that puts 125 psi yeah, on the parachutes as well so pretty damn clean right there back at it again <laughs> all right now we can uh run the co2 lines yep look at this four four strings can't can never have too many yeah i can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're getting close to them finishing up the back we got to run the co2 lines and do the uh run the co2 lines do the burn down tank. I think that's really it. We're building them. What are we doing, Ava? Building them. What are we doing, John? Building them. God, we've got a lot done so far. Yeah. We've been hammering out the punch list. Like, it's it's very nice. Yeah, we got our burn down tube stuff mounted. All this stuff, look, it's secured too. It's like 100% yeah. done. Secured, kind of running back in there. Um, now we're working on some lights. We gotta get good lighting. The whole point is to be able to capture all the in-car stuff when we run at night. A lot of our races, especially the later rounds, are at night and it struggles to get 
good in-car footage so we're gonna try to really improve this year i think are we gonna add these lights to most all the vehicles yeah we're gonna i guess we'll test these and see how they work different colors you know you know we are we did only test it so we held the camera up here where we you know gopro is kind of gonna go and uh facing forward is pretty blinding to the camera to have the light like yeah facing to toward lens. john pretty blinding to him yeah from the camera towards me would definitely be a distraction or an obstruction yeah so we're just trying to find the happy medium um it's probably gonna be vertical the uh roof is painted black so it is absorbing a lot of light when it's like that so you know it's one way or another but you know red might not be that bad you know or yeah. what about this what about post-process could you increase mm. like if if the lighting's like you got some light in there can you like maybe yeah I, it'd be I, a little grainy but yeah i think i think having something's better than nothing so i think even having the light facing up whether it's blue white yellow green red it's going to improve the shot where we can you have some usable in-car footage yeah because now i mean you have done some night footage and you can see so it's not like you can't see no you at it's all. just like especially when you go down track when you're in the shutdown and like as the car's going down track with yeah. the lights passing it's just like it's, it's difficult yeah you could always you could make out pretty good because there's usually decent light on the start line uh, yeah. some tracks bradenton kind of uh like especially going down track and in the shutdown on the turnout it is just like pitch black it's yep. pretty dark virginia further on down track it is oh, virginia is not terrible red springs red springs nighttime like, all this everywhere <laughs> yeah even the start line you just can't see shit in there like the black sheep too it's got tinted windows this one doesn't have tinted windows so hopefully that, that we want to be able to one race and be competitive but two also provide a little bit higher quality content for you guys especially as we start to race more and get more competitive in in races some of these higher classes because i feel like what we're uh providing as far as the content is pretty unique if you are into this kind of stuff yep so all right well i think what we're gonna do is are we gonna do the stick sticky tape and zip tie zip tie yep so we'll clean clean that make sure we don't have no dust or anything up there and then do this one and then the other one we're probably gonna do around the main hoop um maybe facing toward the front just a little bit so but like i said i think once you get some stuff you can post process it and get a lot yeah, of it i think it'll be good all plus right. we'll have the underglow too which will look good i mean we're gonna be lights all over the place Sheesh, the thing gonna be shining like a diamond at pri yeah i'm excited about it Woo all right we got our lights in there this is the most strategic light placement ever when you go to damn I don't know who installs lights. Like who installs just like Lowe's. <laughs> when you go to Lowe's, they don't take this much time and effort in there. We have strategically we have the proper curvature and roll and yaw of the lights that it should provide maximum action capabilities. Without blindingness. Yes. Here let's I'm gonna try to How's this look? Here, picture me in here, be like, ah! Yeah. Good? Is this blinding to you? No, no, it's good. Don't lie to me. No, no, you can see. Yeah, that. That's good? Yeah. And you're going to have the holly dash, too, going. Oh, yes. Oh, and the, that's a 12, 12.8, 12 so that thing is going to be like a damn big screen shining in your face. Yep. Yeah, we want to be able to see what my eyeballs do when the lockup comes on in the top of first gear. Oh, there'll be plenty of light after that. Trust me. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, that that like that uh that picture of the guy where he has the nitrous backfire. You see his eyeballs. It's gonna be John. Oh, you mean that that video of David when he torched a head on the big end <laughs> with 38 degrees of timing that he put in there himself. Well, got our lights. I like it. Stuck in there. We, we, you know where we missed? We don't have any under the hood lights. We really dropped the ball on that. I've never had that. Like, you know, some people hide the lights in the cowl. I've never had that in anything. Nothing I have really has a cowl, though, to be honest. Just saying. Yeah. I mean, the next well, we got light, yeah, underneath it. Tell them about the name of our future build, like our two-year plan. No, we can't. That's a secret. This is, we have long-term goals. First time ever I've set long-term goals. I usually only just set short-term goals, and I just smoke them all. Yeah. Mm. The name of the new car is, it starts with an L. We named it after Mason. It's the lesbian mullet. <laughs> that's his hairstyle. 
Oh, man. Man. All right, guys, a lot of progress on Slick Rick getting done. Got pretty much everything back here all done. We just got to Zeus it on, got it all cleaned up, ready to go. Not only is it ready for PRI, but it's ready for the Hub Dino and testing after that. We got a bunch of Hub Dino! Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> we got a bunch of stickers and cleaning up to do on the car. We got some stuff done in the interior. Are, are we seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, no, we're just getting there. We're going to... Um, I'd say tomorrow we could probably have most of the stuff wrapped up in the interior except for like drive shaft and drive shaft yeah, enclosure. Do the wishbone stuff tomorrow and that way we just put the drive shaft and enclosure and have all that stuff done. Yeah, no, it'd just be all the way to go and then we can uh fill the CO2 bottle, pressurize it, check it. Um we'll have our chromoly plate for our upper strut mount, strut cups. So. And then uh, the day after that, the <laughs> polishing stuff will be in. I mean, realistically, I don't want to say it, but realistically, if everything goes well, Wednesday night, we could be done. That, that's pretty good. That's pretty good right yeah, there. Tomorrow, if I can get the strut cups stuff. Strut cups and the wishbone are the two biggest thing. After that, it's just like tightening up, zip tying it up, uh, some, apply some RTV, and um, just kind of go over everything front to back, head to toe, and make sure everything's good. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty good news. I like it. Glad to have you back. Glad to see that you didn't last over at Odom Racing. Yeah, you know, I just, you know. You're not a Street Outlaws guy. No, I'm not a Street Outlaws guy, and that's what he, he came up to me and started poking me. He was like, I'm the only Street Outlaw. <laughs> you guys don't know that video. <laughs> it's cringeworthy. It's cringeworthy. All right, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Get excited. It's like great content coming soon. And uh, I'm, I know I'm excited to fire this thing up and, uh, you know, pull it in the trailer and drive it around and get ready for the hub dyno. And I know you are as well. And uh, hopefully a lot of ass whooping will come from this guy here.